Hello everyone, it's Mark Dacre here. Welcome to the NT Pod, the podcast all about the New Testament and Christian origins. It's episode 14, and today we're going to be asking the question, was Paul really an apostle? In a couple of recent episodes of the NT Pod, we've explored the roles of Mary Magdalene and Junior in early Christian texts, and suggested that they seem to be women apostles. But there's something that that discussion throws up, which we haven't really explored, and that's what do we even mean by the term apostle, or rather, more importantly, what did they mean by the term apostle? What's the definition? And and, and more importantly, who got to decide who was an apostle and who wasn't? What are the criteria for belonging to that group known as the apostles? Well, in today's episode, I want to explore a controversy which is sometimes unnoticed in connection with Paul, Paul the Apostle. You see, there I've said it, Paul the Apostle. We just think automatically of that term apostle when we say the word Paul. It's difficult to think of Paul without thinking of Paul as the Apostle. But the extent to which we keep on calling him Paul the Apostle, the Apostle Paul, Paul the Apostle to the Gentiles and so on, shows that actually we are just following Paul's own propaganda because he's the one that keeps telling us that he's an Apostle. I mean, he begins lots of his letters that way. 1 Corinthians 1.1, Paul, called to be an Apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, the very first thing he says. Beginning of 2 Corinthians is quite similar. Or look at Romans 11, Romans 11, 13, he calls himself the apostle to the Gentiles and gives that as the reason that he has a right to write to these people. But the question I want to ask is, did everyone see things that way? Well, I'm not sure that they did, because if you look carefully, there's a sort of table-thumping element to Paul's constant description of himself as an apostle, that after a while you begin to notice that there is implied here some kind of disagreement. 1 Corinthians 9.1 is quite revealing in this. He says in 1 Corinthians 9.1, he says, Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not the result of my work in the Lord? Even though I may not be an apostle to others, surely I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. He begins by saying, Am I not an apostle? And then he explains it by saying, I may not be an apostle to others. So clearly there are some people around that think that Paul isn't an apostle and he's he's seeking approval from his congregations to, if you like, kind of underline that nature that he has as an apostle. And you can see hints of the same kind of controversies elsewhere. At the beginning of Galatians, he has hardly even begun before he has to make clear where he gets his apostleship from. He says, Paul, an apostle, sent not with a human commission, nor by human authority, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So he gets straight into the idea that he's commissioned to be an apostle by God. This isn't something that comes from other human beings. And then if you skip along and look at 2 Corinthians, where he's again in a kind of battle with a uh, perceptions of him and perceptions of his identity. He tries to make clear in 2 2 Corinthians 12, 12, he says, I persevered in demonstrating among you the marks of a true apostle, including signs and wonders and miracles. He's trying to underline that he really is an apostle in spite of what other people might say. So the question is, you know, why is it a big deal? I mean, isn't apostle just a word meaning someone who's sent out. That's what we're always taught. I mean, the Greek word apostolos means something like someone who's sent out. There's there's a verb, apostello, which means to send out. So you wouldn't have thought it's that big a deal, would you? Well, it does seem like it does have a kind of special designation in early Christianity uh, as meaning people who are in some way founder members of the Christian community, people who have some kind of special authority to carry forward the gospel, the traditions, and, and so on. Well, when you look at Paul in this kind of context, it's worth noting the kind of thing that he stresses. Now, there's one key thing which keeps coming up whenever he mentions being an apostle, and it's this, that he has seen Jesus. He keeps stressing the resurrection. Most clearly, you get this in 1 Corinthians 9, 1 and 2, which we've already looked at. Have I not seen Jesus, he says, as soon as he asks the question about being an apostle. And you get confirmation that this is important because when you look at 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul is giving the kind of rundown 
of all the people who saw the risen Jesus, he puts himself at the end of that list, and he puts himself at the end of that list just after he said that all the apostles had seen Jesus. All the apostles is itself interesting because it suggests that the kind of full complement of apostles is closed at the moment when they have all seen Jesus. And then Paul kind of tags himself on the end of it. And he's aware that he's doing something a little bit strange there because he even goes on to say, look, you know, I know that this has come as as it came as uh, to someone untimely born. You know, he, he speaks of his own call his own experience of the resurrected Jesus as something that happened out of time, not in that ordinary rundown of all those other resurrection experiences that those other early Christians had had. And indeed, this is the clear thing for Paul. His call to be an apostle is a call that he receives at the moment of what is often called his conversion on the road to Damascus, though it's not strictly speaking a conversion because he's not converting to another religion, and it's not on the Damascus road, at least in Paul's letters, that's in Acts of the Apostles. But um, he seems to correlate that call with the moment that he feels that he saw the resurrected Jesus. Now, this may well have been one of the elements that was controversial in early Christianity, because if you look at that list in 1 Corinthians 15, it's presumably referring to the group of people that saw Jesus or claimed to have seen Jesus in the days or weeks following from uh, Jesus's crucifixion. It's not talking about a period of months or even years like it is with Paul. So he knows that there's something a little bit unusual about his claim to be an apostle. And it may well be that other early Christians were reluctant to say, yes, you're an apostle too, like these other people who witnessed Jesus. But is this something which is just a, a kind of a theory based on a kind of reading between the lines, trying to get underneath uh, the text and, and find controversies where there, were, where there weren't any? Well, I don't think it is. Um, not only because because I think a clear and careful reading of what Paul says in places like 1 Corinthians suggests that there was a bit of controversy about this nature of Paul as an apostle. But also, it gets some corroboration from Acts of the Apostles. Now, most scholars think that Acts of the Apostles is, writ is written quite a bit later than Paul's letters. But it's interesting that when Luke writes Acts of the Apostles, he still seems to witness to some of that early uncertainty about Paul's nature as an apostle. You see, the thing is, in Acts of the Apostles, he divides up history into these kind of little periods. And at the beginning of Acts of the Apostles, Luke says that Jesus was uh, appearing to his disciples for a period of 40 days, for six weeks, and then he ascended into heaven. And of course, Paul comes on the scene much, much later on in Acts of the Apostles, not until the end of chapter 7. So one would then have to say, well, clearly Paul can't have seen the resurrected Jesus if Jesus has already ascended to heaven and the period of resurrection appearances is over. And indeed, it looks like this is the way that Luke depicts that story of Paul's call or conversion on the Damascus Road. He doesn't depict it as an experience of the resurrected Jesus. Rather, it's a kind of vision. Paul is seeing a vision. Now, I don't think that this is the way that Paul would have seen his call it himself. He sees it very much as witnessing to the resurrected Jesus. So, in Acts of the Apostles, you've got the Apostles who are the ones who actually witnessed Jesus at the end of the gospel and at the beginning of Acts. And then later on, you've got Paul who has his vision. And what's more, those people that Luke likes to call apostles have also spent time with Jesus. He makes clear in chapter one, when Matthias is the one who replaces Judas Iscariot, that one of the qualifications for being an apostle is you have to have spent some time with Jesus right since uh, he was uh, with them in Galilee. So Luke himself, for whom Paul is a kind of hero, is reluctant to call Paul an apostle, something that's really striking and, and kind of unexpected when we, uh, when we come to Acts of the Apostles. There is an interesting footnote that we have to add here though, and that's that Paul finally is called an apostle by Luke, and Barnabas is, is called an apostle too in Acts chapter 14, twice in Acts chapter 14. So does that contradict everything that uh, I've just said? Well, quite possibly it does. Perhaps Luke isn't quite as precise and precious about his terminology as some people want him to be. And all right, he has one kind of definition in chapter 1, but then we find out he's a bit looser with it by the time we get to chapter 14. That's quite possible. It may also be that 
deep down Luke is just so used to the idea of Paul being an apostle that he kind of forgets that he doesn't really kind of fit that criterion that he set up earlier on. Perhaps Luke, in his attempt to bring Paul into the fold of the story of the emerging church, trying to kind of make clear to everyone that there wasn't much contradiction in the early church, there weren't any controversies, he's decided to tell that story the way that he has. So where are we left on this fascinating question? Well, I'll try and summarise how I think things happened, but bear in mind that this is just my own particular uh, theory and you might well disagree with it. I think that Paul was a controversial figure and I think that what happened was he claimed the status of apostle. He claimed it on the basis of a calling from God as he saw it through Jesus Christ, whom he felt he had seen resurrected when he received his call. So he claims that he's an apostle because he's, a rec he's received a, a call directly from the resurrected Jesus. Other early Christians thought that this was a bit odd. They were a bit uncertain about Paul. They weren't sure about calling him an apostle. They weren't sure that he could really have seen the resurrected Jesus in the same way that they had, given that there was a passage of time gone by. And some of them were probably unsure because he was calling himself an apostle when the name for many was reserved for those that had been personally commissioned by Jesus during his own ministry. Luke kind of reflects this, I think, in Acts of the Apostles, just by being a little bit careful about applying the title to Paul that Paul, we know, wants to apply to himself. I think that's roughly how it worked out. But of course, when you're doing any of this kind of work, you're dealing in theories, approximations, and trying to work out how the texts line up. Well, thanks very much for listening to the latest episode of the NT Pod. It's been good to have your company. You can find me on the web at podacre.blogspot.com or you can just surf along to iTunes. Go to Duke University's iTunes U and it'll be good to see you there. You can follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Goodacre. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you soon. Oh, and as Columbo would say, uh, one more thing. It's been a great thrill over the last week or so to see the NT pod really rising in the iTunes U chart. As I record this uh, particular episode on September the 23rd, I see that the NT pod is at number 35 in the uh, download chart. So that's great. So thank you very much for all of you that have uh, downloaded it. Thanks for your feedback and I'll be back with another episode soon.